Good morning here from the East Coast at LRBS 2023, the uh, Americas edition. Um, I'm so thrilled to be able to introduce uh, Blair Frazier with UE Systems. Um, I've always admired uh, Blair's um, knack for presentation, storytelling, and in, in, um, in the, the, the expertise that he brings to the table. And so what we'll do now is um, share Blair's presentation. Bear with me. And then we'll have time for Q&A uh, afterwards. Hey, good morning, everybody. My name is Blair Fraser. I'm from UE Systems. If you're not aware of UE Systems, um, we're the market leader in ultrasound solutions. We focus on industrial ultrasound. We firmly believe that everybody has um, should have access to the tools and support needed to operate a safe, reliable, and efficient facility. Um, and what we're going to talk about today here is is unleashing the power of wireless autonomous bearing monitoring and lubrication. It's a bit of a tongue twister. Um, and the key words are there, of course, the wireless part, but what is autonomous bearing monitoring and lubrication? And what I'm gonna talk about here is, um, you know, that, that famous P to F curve of, of, that most of us know around, um, you know, the P as defined by Nolan Heaps as that identifiable physical condition. So something that has to go wrong in order for us to detect it. And that's in, in the IoT space, that's what I call the race to detect an issue. And we're not here to argue whether vibration or ultrasound, infrared, uh, whether those techniques are, are superior to the other, they do really complement each other. And more importantly is where I see um, a lot of us maturing in this space is really focusing on not letting that defect to happen in the first place, if we don't have a defect to detect, we don't have to race to the P. Some people now call it the D to I to P to F curve design, to the install. Um, and, and really what we're trying to do is, is remove that failure from happening in the first place. And why is that important for us in this group? Is, well, because up to 80% of premature bearing failures can be traced back to a problem with lubrication. That's a staggering number. Now that's one study, a lot of studies out there. and, and Regardless of the comeback at 60%, 70%, 80%, it's still a large number of why bearings fail. And of course, when a bearing fails, your equipment fails. And they say about 50% of equipment failure is caused by bearing issues. So you start to do the math there. You start to see how impact of, of what is presumably seems like a simple task of greasing a bearing can have a very, very big impact on the operations in your facilities. And when you look at these studies, and we think about it, and if you were to ask, you know, people outside of our space, what, what is, you know, a problem with lubrication? It's probably comes back to too much or too little grease, which is true. It absolutely has a big impact. But when you dive deeper into these studies, what you see is it's making sure you're using the right grease, making sure that grease is clean, making sure, of course, you're renewing it, you're putting the right quantity amount into it. So until you really address all of these issues that are compounding to that 80%, you can still have issues. So when we look at this autonomous system is we need to be able to address all of those issues. And, and what I'm going to try to talk about today and, and um, what, if I can get it done in the next 20 minutes is how does the system address all of those issues that we see here on the left hand side. So what is condition based lubrication? If anyone is new to ultrasound, what we're doing is we're listening to things you can't hear inside of your ears. We're able to listen what's happening inside of that bearing. If you were to take our technology and put it to your watch, you would hear every little tick that would happen. And the same thing is happening for a bearing. Essentially, what we're doing is we're measuring that friction in a bearing. Why does ultrasound become so um, so used industries for this? Because Friction is, is very explainable, whether you're an engineer, a technician, or you're on the finance side, most of us have the ability to understand friction. More friction equals bad friction creates heat, all those type of things. So really with ultrasound based lubrication or what we call condition based lubrication is removing the guesswork. We are lubricating based on the friction or the condition of that bearing. Is it too good to be true? No, it's not. It's really that simple, but there are some caveats to that. Um, there's certain things that can happen depending on the type of bearing and things like that, but the principle remains the same, 
right? And if you look at that picture, and I apologize if that is your motor, but unfortunately, this isn't common, right? What is the saying? A little bit of grease is good, more must be better. In this case, it's not. So when we look at this and, and, and we look at condition-based lubrication, what we're doing is we're really looking about that friction. We're trying to monitor that friction and find that ideal spot of, of when that friction starts to go up, when can we apply grease to reduce that friction? And of course, if you apply the wrong grease, it doesn't have the right properties, that friction is not going to drop as much or it's going to come back quicker. So there's a lot of things that ultrasound can start to do. Now, this is my idea or, or representation of, of friction in a bearing over time. Now, what I'm simulating here showing you is um, under lubrication, which in fact is probably not the most common. We do see over lubrication as the most common, but if you see that friction, it starts to go up. When we catch it with condition-based lubrication, we're catching it at the earliest possible opportunity. We're not getting to the point where we have secondary damages. We're not creating excess heat in the bearing or excess movement, which is why vibration and temperature um, often aren't enough just to be able to do it based on lubrication. And that's where ultrasound comes in. So we catch it, we lubricate it, we drop that friction. What happens in typically time-based is we let a long period of time go across and that friction increases. And you know that time between when we could have caught it and that friction has gone up to the time we actually lubricate it, that's time under stress or time under friction, if you will. And that's what's causing these bearings to fail. That's what's causing the pits and the, the heat to go up and all that kind of stuff, right? So we're trying to optimize and remove the guesswork when it comes to lubrication. So when we think about this holistically, you know, is, is really, we're trying to answer two simple questions. And throughout this talk, we're going to talk about speaking in inquiry, speaking in, 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 in questions. So really, in order to get lubrication right, or to move to autonomous lubrication, where you don't have to squeeze a grease gun anymore, it's going to do it based on condition, you need to answer these two simple questions, seemingly simple questions. One, when is lubrication required? Two. How much am I going to put in there, right? And if you answer those two simple questions, then you've reduced that 80%. But how do we how do we answer those questions? So let's take a little bit of a journey with me. And 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 th this this is the timeline in, in Blair's eyes. It's 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 not um, exactly correct to, in, as we get to items three and four here. But you know, there's early on with lubrication. I call it whenever lubrication. Um, you know, it, I'll get to it when I get to it. If I think it needs grease, I'll add grease into it, right? And then, you know, we got these calculators that come out. We grabbed a calendar and a calculator and, and a lot of providers out there did the best they could in terms of providing, you know, based on your bearing details, based on your applications. Um, you put that into a formula and it gives you guidance to when and how much. Now, the challenge is, is there's a lot of variables you have to assume in these calculations. Um, how much is that asset moving? What's the temperature? What's the humidity? And if you're based in, in, in a northern climate like I am, your winters are dramatically different than your summers if you have equipment outside. So theoretically, you would need different lubrication plans based on the weather, based on the humidity, based on the temperature. So sometimes it got us in the ballpark, but sometimes it was completely wrong. So around item three and four here is when um, technology started to come into play. So instead of using a calculator and a calendar, we were able to use condition-based lubrication. You're able to walk around with a portable handheld instruments, listen to it, trend the decibel, trend the friction, and lubricate when it needed. But you're still going out there, um, you're still walking around your assets, and you still have to do it on time. Why? Because you're going to do your routes or, or do your periodic inspections on time. And we all know throughout the history of maintenance and reliability, the enemy is time. We don't, we shouldn't be doing maintenance based on time. There are some time-based PMs. I don't want to get into that discussion, but we're, we're, we're trying to move away from time. So how did the industry solve that? They came out with single point lubricators. So we didn't have to walk around out there anymore or, or lubrication distribution systems. Um, and, and these were set on calendar time to dispense and albeit sometimes very slowly um, to put grease into a bearing, but we're still basing it on time, even if it's a drip system, meaning it's going to put, you know, a little bit of amount every, every day, every hour, whatever it's going to be. Some of them got a little more sophisticated to add some type of technology to, to help determine some of the variables like runtime. Well, the assets off, I can use a vibration sensor to detect when the, when the assets on or off, and then I won't lubricate when it's off. Right. But it still wasn't solving our problem. Really what happened here at UE systems is, 
you know, and, and our customers really drove us to this, the thousands and thousands of, we call them grease caddies, of ultrasound equipment out there that are being used to properly lubricate bearings. Um, we're being used to guide people in setting the single point lubricators. So it really came from our customers of, can you put the accuracy and answering those two simple questions you can, you can do with when and how much from your products of ultrasound and can you tie that into a single point lubricator? So it's not going to do it on time. It's going to do it based on when it needs it. And holy smokes, what a great idea. And the OnTrack system was born. Um, at this point, it wasn't truly autonomous yet. Well, how do you, we wanted humans in the loop, but we were able to work with the data and, and two and a half years of experience of collecting over 40 billion data points that we have out today on um, the on tracks that are streaming data, 40 billion data points. I'm not talking about we sample at, you know, 20,000 times a second. These are four to data points of friction, of lubrication points, right? It's a gazillion data points when you look at the spectrum, but it's really 40 billion data points that we've collected. And we've been able to learn from that. And, and, and that's what I'm going to share with you today about some of these unique things that we've seen. So when we look at the system, I'll use these names autonomously throughout uh, um, uh, this presentation, but essentially what we need is at the heart of the system, a lot of people think it's the software, it's the gateway, and, and those are means to display data, but the heart of the system is the sensor. How do we measure that friction? And as you can see here, you know, we complement it with other technologies to really give us that confidence. And of course, we need that single point lubricator, but we don't just want any single point lubricator out there. Since the system has the capability of being autonomous, we need to have confidence it's working. Right, so when I say lubricator sensor, I want to give you an idea of what this what the system looks like. So this is a real trend of, of, of data, and I'll, I want to explain to you what this looks like. So what we're doing is is with ultrasound, we're measuring a decibel level, um, and a very very sensitive decibel level. In fact, if you were to take our equipment and you were to blink your eyelids together, you would hear your eyelids um, creating friction. Now. You take that industrial environment, you don't want somebody walking by your bearing and blinking their eyes and, and all of a sudden you have spikes. So what we do is we patent the technology around auto sensitivity. So one of the things with ultrasound is, um, yes, can you measure in that that high frequency domain, but how sensitive, how 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 little of a change can you measure? In that bearing, and it's something that we've been able to develop and bring to market is auto sensitivity. And anyone that has ultrasound, you're probably familiar with adjusting your sensitivity. Well, with these sensors, you need to be autonomous. You, can, you can't go out there if you have a slow speed bearing or you change your bearing from what was once bad to good. You need to be able to adjust that. So we built in auto sensitivity. So when we look at this chart, what you have is that green line on the bottom. That's ideal friction. That's what we ideally want this bearing operating up. If you look at that dashed blue line, that's the ISO alert limit for it needs lubrication which is eight decibels over that baseline. And then 16 is the yellow, which is a warning. And then off the chart is red, which is critical. And it's walking down the hallway. So if you look at that blue line, solid line with the, with the orange line going through it, that's the friction in the bearing. Why is there an orange line in between? Because what we do is we average that out. That's something we've learned is, is you know, friction is very subjective to process and things like that. So we have a unique way to average that out to give us a nice line. And um, what you see is that that friction line goes up Grease is added and it drops down, right? Over time, right? Proper bearing lubrication does take time. It's not going to squeeze a whole bunch of grease in there, watch that temperature rise. It's very methodically putting grease in. And it really becomes as simple as that. We're measuring that friction and we're controlling the friction. So here's what we've learned is what happens if there's a there's an issue with bearing, with the bearing. And and this has been a challenge. So Really, we're going back to answering a couple more questions here. Two simple questions when it comes to the health. So we've talked about, you know, how we can how we can lubricate that bearing autonomously um, by using the friction. But what if there's a defect? And we're, so by answering what is my bearing friction and how much impacting is there in that bearing, we can get a sense of whether it's a lubrication issue or a, 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 um, a failure within that bearing. Very, very important to distinguish those two. And so what we learned is around how we process that ultrasound signal. And it's one thing we've learned is 
This technique only works for online. So if you were to take this data periodically, you wouldn't, you would need a gross amount of data points. Now, if you're taking this data online, it's very easy to collect um, a lot, not to say a lot of data, but a lot of samples um, in a repeatable fashion. Um, so what we do is when, when we have these systems out there, we're in a learning mode. We set our initial baselines as we would with any of our equipment, but these other variables I'm going to talk about only come after we've learned about how that asset or that bearing normally operates. And there's things in, in, in if you're in the vibration space, you'll understand these, the max peak, kurtosis, correct factor in, a, in an RMS, right? They make sense, but it wasn't until we combined them with historical data did we really truly learn how to come up with these two variables friction sense so the friction level in the bearing what is my friction and what is the impact sense the impacting severity and if you can differentiate between those two in a repeatable fashion you really have a unique way of looking at the health and lubrication needs of your bearing so let me walk you through this really quickly let's take a look at this chart um, this is from our, our program from called spectralizer which we use with our handheld instruments so these are data taking on um, a route based and if you look at the the this time waveform so we're looking at the time series data about taken every 22,000 times per second, right? And what we're seeing is a high level of, of friction in here. Um, but if you look at the spikes, that's what's concerning. So we know when a bearing needs lubrication, there's a lot of impacting that can happen, right? Which will elevate our, our, our friction level, but we don't understand why. And when we start to get that data from these online or permanent mount systems, we can see. So on the left-hand side, bearing a good bearing correctly grease that friction level drops and the impacting severity drops significantly when we look what happens when we lubricate a bad bearing well first of all our friction level is higher the the impacting might not be as high because the friction level is so high but after we lubricate that friction the sorry that impacting or what we call impact sense is still high so while we still reduce that friction we know there's an issue in that bearing and chances are that friction is going to elevate really quickly back in time. So we can start to look at this data in a unique way. We can start to look at it, what's my friction? Well, in this case, that friction on that lubricating that bad bearing did drop and it dropped to likely a good level. But what's happening is that impact level is still very severe, right? So you can imagine this system that's out there lubricating your bearings um, on your behalf using intelligence, using friction as its guide, but also giving this impact, hey, I've been lubricating this bearing, but my impacting is off the charts. There's something going wrong with this bearing. Lubrication and what we found over the years is lubrication can, can mask a failure, can mask impacting, but it's never gonna solve that issue. The analogy I use, it's like filling a pothole, right? And if you live in the Northern climates, you know exactly what I'm talking about. You, the, in the springtime, the city will come around, fill the pothole, but as cars go over it and over it and over it, you rip that asphalt back up and that pothole still exists. So lubrication is exactly that. So we're able with this autonomous system is not just lubricate, but move towards the health side of it as well. Identify what is the health or the longevity of this bearing. And of course, one thing I don't want to overlook is our human senses. So we look at autonomous systems is you know, it's going to go out there, it's going to, it's going to lubricate based on friction. And you put some guidelines that have, it, it, it knows, or we put in um, the type of bearing, the max bearing capacity. So regardless of the friction, it's not going to sit there and, and, and dispense a whole cartridge of grease into that bearing. Nor if that friction starts to go up while it's lubricating, it's indication it's over lubricated already. It will automatically stop. So it truly is autonomous out there. But just being able to hear your bearings is, is pretty insightful. And I guarantee if you were to listen to bearings and I was to play some audio files from an ultrasound perspective of bad bearing, good bearing, you'd be able to pick out which ones are bad just by using your senses, your intuition. So we thought, well, if this system is out there autonomously, how do we have the ability to be able to hit a button wherever you are? And could you imagine just being able to get your phone and going, hey, you know what? I don't like that impacting on that. Let me just listen to that bearing in your room say, hey, you guys hear something wrong with that bearing? That's exactly what we want to complete or be able to, to do with this system. So while it's out there autonomously, you can still check in. You can still listen to those bearings everywhere. And my recommendation is don't underestimate the value of your human senses. As much as technology is great, I love it. Uh, we built some pretty unique technology here. The ability just to be able to listen in is still very, very valuable. And one thing we've learned with, with ultrasound is vibration is very um, complementary. 
to it in this space. So where ultrasound is really good at bearing defects, um, lubrication, um, things that happen to the asset, so unbalanced misalignment, looseness, often show up in, in the vibration or the, the lower frequency before it shows up in the higher frequency. So what we were able to do was combine this sensor and be able to give us additional enhancements or confidence in it by putting vibration in there. I'm not going to get into the details of this, but what allows us to do is estimate the speed and look at the acceleration, the velocity. So when we're looking at these autonomous systems, we're not guided by one principle. We can start to look at the impacting, the friction, the vibration, and of course, temperature, which does come later in life, but it does give us an indication. Right, if that bearing starting to heat, it just gives us because these systems are designed to be autonomously out there, and and you know they'll push alerts to you versus you going to check in on them. Um, we want to make sure we have every insight possible to let people make good decisions about the health and care of their bearings. And really, you know, I started this conversation off saying UE Systems is is in the ultrasound business, and we are. We're not in the we're first of all we're not in the grease business, and we're not in the data business. We don't want your data, so we've built these platforms, and I'm sure there's going to be discussion on that AI panel, um, as well as as around data, who owns your data, and things like that. So uh, first of all, the system is designed to work with your grease. We we don't. So we don't, there's not a UE Systems grease we have. You want to put a mobile in there, or whatever it is, you put it in there. Um, but the lubricator part of it, while it's not the heart of the system, we wanted to design a system or a lubricator that gave you confidence. So most of these times, these um, lubricators are out there and you don't know about them. You don't know the health. You don't know how they're working. Is the battery dead? Did they fall off? Did we accidentally forget to put it on after an overhaul? So we need to be able to have two-way communications with these lubricators. So at any point in time, when you have these autonomous systems out there, you'd want to know the grease level. And I jokingly say to people is said if you in, in your course, you can tie this into your CMS or your ERP system. So when it gets to a certain level, boom, triggers a purchase order and, and you, you buy more grease from your vendor. Right. But if, if you run out of grease, you've chosen. To ignore alarms, um, detect back pressure. So these lubricators have the ability to mount um, about 20 feet away um, from the bearing itself, why to get in the areas where you can access it and service it and things like that. So we can push it through grease line. But what happens? Well, grease lines can get plugged. Um, they can fall off. Right. So there's a lot of things that can happen there. So we have a back pressure. So it is self-serving. So it, it's designed not to you know, blow itself off in terms of the lubricator, but we don't want it sitting there and, and uh, trying to push a slug of grease through and blow the seals right off the bearing. So it'll stop and say, hey, on you know your boiler feed water pump nine drive in the lubricator has a back pressure issue um and ensure grease is reaching the bearing and this is something we were able to patent a while ago and what we found is based on the churning or or how grease enters that bearing there's a momentary increase in friction and the impacting that we can see and the way the system is designed and very unique is while it's a wireless sensor it's battery sensor is when we go to lubricate it's we can't we don't want to wait an hour for an update so what we have is it automatically puts in the fast sample mode, which can update the friction, the impact, and the vibration, the temperature every minute. So we know the minute that grease is hitting that bearing. And of course, we can grab that audio signal too, so we can listen to it while it's greasing. So we're able to see that when grease hits the bearing, there is a momentary impact or a change in that friction and impacting as that grease slug you know, comes through the annual ring or however it's coming into that bearing and getting pushed throughout the bearing. And of course, the battery life. And overall health status. We have a temperature sensor built in. We have the humidity. So we know the conditions of that lubricator. So, so really, when we look at these systems, and I wanted to introduce you this concept, this, this new idea of autonomous bearing lubrications, uh, bearing lubrication. And, and really, when you think about it, what I just went through was about looking at four simple questions to get you to bearing lubrication excellence. One, when is lubrication required? Two, how much? Three, what is my bearing friction? And how much impacting do I have? And if you can, with one system, answer all four of those questions, you are on your way to lubrication excellence. So what I'm gonna do is, I know I covered a lot of information. Now I wanted to spend two and a half hours and go through more details, go through more case studies, um, go through some deployment pictures or, or use case scenarios that we have. And, and we have them documented for, gosh, it's gotta be every industry out there. So if you have air handler units, um, motors and pumps, motors and fans, cooling towers, 
um, things like that. And anything that spins in a circle, chances are we've, we've, we've slapped a sensor to it and, and we've learned from it. So I'm going to invite you, um, and of course I'll be here for some, some questions. Um, if you have some ideas or want to get dive a little deeper into the, the, the technology or the spectrums, um, how, we, how we do friction sense, how we do impact sense, how does vibration complement this um, when it comes to lubrication? And of course, how do you build... How do you build confidence into autonomous lubrication system? Uh, you see my email there. You can you can find me on LinkedIn, and of course I'll be here at uh, at the conference. You can reach out to me. Um, any any ideas you have, I, I welcome. And, and if anyone that knows me, um, you know I'll be a, a very hard person to stop talking. So I invite you, even if you have no interest in the product, but you're just curious about how it works, please reach out. Um, email is the best way. Um, and again, if you find me on LinkedIn, you can ping me on there too. So I'll be here for questions and I really do appreciate your, your time here as we, we took a look into the world or what the future or, or even the future, the current um, uh, tools and strategies that we now have out there thanks to IoT and AI and, and cloud um, around precision bearing lubrication. Hey Blair, thanks so much for that uh, uh, amazing um, presentation. Uh, we have some time for uh, a few questions. We have them rolling in already. Um, so just unmute yourself and I'll, I'll read the, this first one um, from Breno. Um, so is the ultrasound technology applicable to oils as well? So not only grease applications. Yeah, and it's again, it's difficult for me to answer questions in a brief amount of time, but the, the, the short answer is yes. So anything that's going to create friction is, is going to pick up an ultrasound. The challenge is how early do you want to detect a fault? And that's why proximity sensors are, are known for the best as they're looking at that 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 film moving in the, in the, the, the bearing getting closer to the outer race. Um, so absolutely, if you're looking at... Um, you know, detecting whether there's oil or not in that, obviously friction is going to going to increase as well. And there are oil lubricators and, and things out there, but ultimately, I would challenge what your what your intent is is with that um, with the technology and ultrasound. If you're looking at how early to detect failures and what you're trying to do with it, Excellent. I mean, that's interesting to to move it into the uh, uh, the, the the loop side of things. Um, so, yeah, more questions coming in. How long does the battery power typically last? Yeah, and, and again, I'm not this typical sales answer. Well, it depends, right? Uh, and it, but it, it really does. Um, so we're, we we aim for five years of battery life with with updating at a set interval of of one hour. Doing, um, I guess, in, in the way the system works is you can set the update rate. So the, the sensor here is going to um, it's probably blurred out here, but it's it's going to update, you know, every hour or whatever you want, uh, it, but we do have the ability to update every every minute. And why do we do that? Because when we're lubricating, we don't want to wait an hour in between updates. So again, if the more you lubricate, the more battery is going to use. So we've used um, the data we've had from about two and a half years of, of lubrication with the existing wired on-track system. And what we found is based on using the same parameters, it's around five years. Now you put it up in Canada where I am, where there's a really harsh winter and it's coming. Um, you know, things don't last as long in the winter and same with the extreme heat. So there are some dependence and we do have some calculators for that, but Raymond for about five years of, of typical operation. Fantastic. Um, so do your sensors have the ability to connect with third parties such as oil analysis labs? Um, so the grease is being analyzed in the lab and the data analyst could view data coming from your sensors and the yeah. data. So so a great question. I can tell that person has put some thought into this. And then the fact that they're doing grease analysis tells me the maturity of, of where they're heading as well. So the short answer is yes. So the platform is designed to get data out, not to get data in, right? So we built the platform. We don't want to be this master data. We don't want to own the data set of all condition monitoring technologies. So we decided to build as easy as we could. Um, our engineering calls them uh, secure public APIs. And which which means that data is readily available to get out and to bring into somewhere else, whether it's your CMMS system, ERP system. Um, so as long as that other data from your oil lab or grease samples can get into that system as well, then it seems like a, a good fit. Awesome. I think we have time just for one essentially yes or no question um, from Kevin out there. Is the automated lubricator ATEX rated? 
So the lubricator is, but the sensor is not. And that's something we're, we're working on as we speak. So the gateway okay. lubricator is, but the sensor is not at this point. So we are going through that process now. Awesome. Perfect. Okay. We're right at the time. Blair, thanks so much for sharing your knowledge. Thank you, everybody. Um, for Great to learn so much. Take care. All.